Okay, here's an interesting idea. I was thinking, what if you had to live off the grid? And I, I guess unless you live in a tropical region, probably the, uh, you know, if you want to live out in the woods or something in a cabin. And, uh, you know, first thing you would need before electricity is heat. And I guess you could, you know, get solar panels, which are inefficient, and then uh, pump that into batteries, which are inefficient, and then uh, try to heat something with a heater, and it's, it's, it's just going to be very inefficient, the whole process. It'll take huge amounts of solar panels to uh, provide your heat. It'll be expensive. Solar panels are expensive. And um, here's a simple process. You know, what, what if you could somehow store heat? I mean, heat is a very uh, basic form of energy. And uh, what, what if you could store that and just re use it later? And I was thinking probably the, the easiest way to store heat would be in a chemical reaction. So what we have here is we have a glass of water, which you would probably have water. And here is some drain cleaner. It's almost pure sodium hydroxide. And here we have a little beaker. And we have a thermometer. I guess it doesn't go down below 100, but we can probably watch it to see if it rises, see how hot it gets. So the idea is is that you put some water into your reaction chamber and let's let's put oh I don't know I don't want to overfill it because I gotta stick a thermometer in there that's 30 milliliters 30 milliliters make sure the thermometer is not going to displace it too much and <clears throat> well, let's let's get our sodium hydroxide opened up now this is kinda dangerous stuff but in principle what you could do, let's all turn into flakes, I guess. Is you could uh, ooh, store big containers of this, and one of the nice things about uh, using sodium hydroxide in water, first of all, it's going to give you uh, about 44.51 kilojoules of energy, heat energy per mole, and it, it won't be, you know, if you stored it in like some kind of thermal thing, it, it would always be losing temperature, always loses its its, uh, its energy. It just leaks out of everything, but chemical energy stores very well. And, uh, you know, if you wanted to use something like propane or something like that, propane is going to produce a bunch of carbon monoxide. And so if you leave it while you're sleeping, you're going to have to vent it outside or something. And then that's a whole big issue because you're going to let cold air in as you're venting it out. But something like this would not produce any, it's not a chemical reaction, it's heat's given off when you dissolve sodium hydroxide into water. And the neat thing about it is, is that if you want to reclaim it, you could uh, set this solution out in the sun when you're done and evaporate the water or maybe get a distiller and try to distill the water. And it's, it's very cheap and inexpensive to build a solar evaporator compared to making solar panels and cells and batteries and all that stuff. I mean, you can make a solar evaporator out of very cheap parts. And you could reclaim your sodium hydroxide, save it up in vats, and reuse it. So anyway, <clears throat> just an idea. Let's get in here a little bit. We'll focus on our beaker here. And let's see if we can see the thermometer. So let's zoom in on the thermometer. Okay, so the thermometer is very low right now because uh, we don't have any... Okay, can you see that? Let's try putting some sodium high... Well, actually, you know what? Before I start, maybe I should put a little piece of tape on the thermometer so we can remember where that level is before we start adding sodium hydroxide. Okay. Okay. So, what I did is I, uh, you gotta turn that thermometer just so, so you can see the red line. And I taped a little yellow piece of paper there so you can remember where the line started. I really don't have any graticals going down that low. Okay. And so, 
Here is our sodium hydroxide. Let's start dumping some in. Look at the temperature, it's already rising. Let's feel the beaker. We'll stir it up a little bit. Oh, we've gone from about room temperature up to about 100 degrees. Let's zoom out a little bit. Oh. And it is still rising. So we started out down here, which is what this is a oh, it's a fish for thermometer. Anyway, the fish probably would not like this very much. That's Fahrenheit. So we were probably about 60 degrees. It's kind of cold down here. We've gone up to about 100 degrees with just a little sodium hydroxide. Okay. Maybe we can add a little bit more. Well, let's stir this up. Yeah, the bottom's getting really hot. Where the sodium hydroxide is. Getting really hot. Oh my gosh. Ooh. It's like almost too hot for me to hold on to. Holy cow. Ugh. So we're at, what, 125, 130 almost? You see that? It is getting hot. So very economical way. Whew, boy, the whole beaker's getting really hot. To heat your cabin or something like that, if you had to you know, live out in the wild after the post-apocalypse or whatever, You know, all this fancy technology is designed to bankrupt you. You gotta do things smartly. Here, let me see. I wonder if I add a little bit more, if we can get it up to about 150. Let's see. It's really getting hot. Like I said, the, the best thing about... Oh, that's a big clump. I don't know if I want to stick that much in. You do want to be careful with this stuff because it is highly corrosive. Okay. But you can uh, just recover it by evaporating the water. A very simple solar thing. Solar evaporator. No need for silicon cells or any of that other fancy technology. Won't cars cause uh, carbon monoxide poisoning, so you can put this in your cabin and live in there and sleep with it. Don't have to worry about venting things outside. Wow, look at the temperature. It's way up there now. It's going way up. Okay, let's, let's stir things up a little bit. Ooh, wow. So anyway, oh, it's above 150, and it's still going up. So chemical heat, very interesting, huh? I could imagine having a cabin with large vats of this stuff. That's good for dissolving things too, if you want to just get rid of something. This stuff will dissolve just about anything, so don't stick your fingers in it. It is, it's still dangerous. Remember, any energy that's worth uh, 
you know, people talk about nuclear power. I say, it's great. They're, oh, it's so dangerous. Any energy that's worth anything is dangerous, right? You took a gallon of gas and you poured it on yourself and lit it on fire. That would be very dangerous, too. So what are we, we're almost up 175 degrees. Gotta get it just right so you can see it. And it's still getting hotter. Ooh, ooh, the beaker is so hot. Ooh, it's like burning hot. I don't even want to touch it. So anyway, I just thought I would share this idea with you guys out there. See what you thought about uh, the idea of uh, inexpensive solar heating. Super inexpensive. With water and uh, sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide over here. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, we're still going up in heat. It is, it is hot. Yep. Anyway, this is uh, Dr. Janes, and thanks for watching.